Hey guys, welcome to the Skull Show. It's your host, Paxton. We're here with Jason after an NFL draft. And it looks like our predictions were pretty much correct. We said we should stick and pick. We thought it would be Michael Penix. However, the Falcons made a questionable move, and they instead drafted him. So, anything you want to say I don't about Falcons? Michael Penix. Penix? Did I say Michael Penix? I didn't say Michael Penix, did I? Uh, not necessarily panics, but we both wanted to like stay at eleven or within Did, close. Didn't want to trade picks. Yeah, I didn't want to trade. Yeah, picks. yeah. So I said it'd probably be Penix, but the Falcons took him at eight. Questionable is my best word to describe that. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad move because we don't really know that yet, but just definitely questionable. Maybe Cousins Achilles fell off. <laughs> Maybe. So we'll start off. Vikings get JJ McCarthy at 11 or 10 because they trade up one spot to box out the uh, Broncos where Sean Payton. Did you see his interview where he said that he tricked them into saying that? Uh, I did, yes. Uh, not very smart move by Payton if that is true because he ended up giving an AFC team draft capital while taking it away from an NFC team. So. If that was really his idea, then he's just salty about the Minneapolis miracle. Other like, because that's my only explanation. Otherwise, I don't get it. He he uh, hates the Vikings. Yeah. Speaking of which, but he, Bo, Bo yeah. Nix might be good. You never know. Yeah. Nice. Got the power nice. right there. Yep. But even if Bo Nix is good, which I don't think he like he obviously we don't know anything about any of these rookies. None of them are sure thing. Either way, either bus or it's going to be good. So he could be good, but I still don't get why you would try to bait the Vikings into trading up other than the fact you're just salty that they beat you or you had to cheat. He just likes the controversy. Yeah, he likes attention. So um, we go into uh, – so anything you want to say about uh, J.J. McCarthy? Um, hopefully he's good. <laughs> That's Yeah, I mean – yeah, he's a definitely good runner, uh, good mentally, and obviously has the intangibles. Don't know about his sample size necessarily because he had a great running back core at Michigan. Didn't necessarily have to do too much compared to some of the other guys, but when he was given opportunities, he did very well in them. So that's my main take. Obviously, I'm not watching too many Michigan J.J. McCarthy games other than national championships. So, yeah. Some- some people are calling him Christian Ponder 2.0. That would be bad. That would be bad. But I feel like this was more of a pick where they like they had it planned. They were going to take McCarthy. Um, whereas Ponder, I felt like, was more of a panic pick. So However, did you hear the differences? that it's been validated that the Vikings offered the Patriots uh, both of their first-round picks and next year's first-round pick for the number three pick? For Drake yeah, May, and the Patriots said no. Yeah, I mean, not much more you can do there. So, I mean, I I do feel like that is what I would have given up for that pick, at the maximum. So if they're not gonna, I I feel like they did the right thing and not, not like getting too desperate trading for them, especially if. Well, I think here's my thing is uh no matter who gets drafted, the Patriots is gonna be a bust. May, Drake May is gonna be a bust. But it's not fair to say in three, four years that Drake may, like, thank goodness the Vikings didn't trade up for him because, like, the Vikings are a much better situation for a rookie quarterback than the Patriots. And that's really goes without saying. Yeah, it could be the opposite. Hey, where do I get a mic like your mic? How come I don't have a mic like that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we have the funds to sponsor you a mic, but you could probably order a, one is, on Amazon. Is that a new addition? No, uh, since Christmas, about since I don't like, remember seeing it before. Yeah, it's pretty. I I don't know. It's pretty out of the way, but well, I guess it actually is pretty high in the frame today. But yeah, has it always been there? Mm-hmm. For a while, yeah. Yeah, that's I that's the reason we switched. Yeah, that's the reason we switched to this website instead of the Facetimes. Maybe if I had a sponsor, I would get one. Yeah, we need to get sponsored by. Uh, JJ McCarthy, or 
Or I could do one in honor of the infant and have Huggies diapers sponsor me, and then I would have a mic. It'd be great. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Um, so then we go to 17, traded up from 23 to draft Dallas Turner. I think that we did give up a pretty good amount to get him, although I do feel like he's a very he, – he has potential to, like, replace Daniel Hunter very quickly. Again, potential. And uh, I like that pick. He's a beast. He should be good. Although we did give up a pretty good amount to get him. In full disclosure, I didn't know who he was until you sent me a text saying that you wanted to take him, and then they took him, and then I looked him up. I didn't know who he was, but I don't watch college football because, well, I do a little bit, but it's hard to follow. I agree. College football is rough, especially when the Hawkeyes are the most boring team to watch in the history of and, football. NIL is terrible. Oh, I know. But that's another quarter story. Quarter. Yeah. So we'll, we can come back to the Vikings. Oh, actually, let's just go quickly through the rest of the draft. Uh, Kyrie Jackson, cornerback, very talented. The reason he was drafted, maybe not in the first or second round, is due to his age and lack of experience. He started 14 games last year. Did very, very well in those 14 games, but he's 25, year old, 25 years old at the start of the season and only played 16 games as a starter in his career. So that's kind of where his hindrance is. But skill-wise, through those 16 games, definitely first, second-round talent. Um, do you know much about him? No. All I know is the history of the new GM's draft picks not good. So you better hope that McCarthy and the other guy work out, and then these other picks won't matter. Did they draft a kicker? Yeah, they did. Uh, I think Will the last Rickard. kicker they drafted was Blair Walls from the University of Georgia. He missed a 27-yard field goal. That's incorrect. Ooh. That would be Daniel Carlson. Oh yeah, yeah. Then they traded Zimmer him. screwed the pooch there, but that was Spillman that picked him. Yeah, no, no. Carlson's good. Zimmer screwed it up because he cut him after one game. I would have cut. He cut him after two. I would have cut him after one or something like that. But he deserved. They cut him after a Packers game where he blew three game-winning kicks. But that's that's deserved to be cut. Well, now he's top three to five kicker in the league, so I mean, yeah. I can, his I can brother, understand. His, bro- his brother's a kicker for the Packers. Yeah, he's not good. No. and Kickers are worth do- Nobody <laughs> wants a kicker. Oh, I know. Uh, the Vikings also have a guy from the XFL, John Parker Romo. He's number 96, I believe, so that's certainly something. Yeah, we like that. At least he's a kicker that's got some character. Oh, yeah. That'll be fun. And then we uh, signed a punter along to compete with Ryan Wright. Ryan Wright will more than likely win that job. I'd also say Rhea Cardin, the rookie kicker, is favored to win it just because he's the guy they drafted in the sixth round. So gives him an edge there. They also drafted should, a swing tackle. I think we should probably call Greg Coleman to get his analyzation on the punters, don't you? Do you know who Greg Coleman is? Yeah. Um, that, I mean – He's a very good interviewer at the games now. That's all I know. And he, uh, he's retired there. now. Ben Lieber took yeah. over. Yeah. Um, okay. So we also took offensive tackle, swing tackle, Walter Rouse out of Oklahoma. Uh, he should be that he was the best player available pick, maybe a Brian O'Neill replacement during like pending injury. He won't start, obviously, because we have two great uh, tackles. But he'll be a great backup. Both of our tackles are injury prone, and he can play both ways and was definitely the best player available at their pick. So uh, I don't mind that pick. Don't know too much about him because I'm not watching O-line film from Oklahoma University. But, yeah. I'll, I'll add some value to the school show and tell you that you should do a little Google search here. His dad, Clint or Cliff Rouse, I can't remember. Played for the Vikings way back in the day, like 1984. Look it up. Is he good? Uh, don't know. <laughs> Probably not right, great I'll... since nobody knows about him. <laughs> yeah, I'll look him up now. Cliff Rouse, no. Clint? Something like that. Uh, no, that did not show up either. Um, anyways. Well, we're Stenner, two. Michael Jurgens, Wake Forest. Again, don't know too much about him. Uh, I, I, everything I've said so far is based off scouting reports that I've read. I don't, 
I can't recall a single thing about Jurgens. So yeah, he's a center. Maybe compete. And then Levi Drake Rodriguez is a D two defensive tackle out of Commerce, Texas AM. So or Texas AM Commerce, however they say it. Uh so I don't know. No, don't know much about him. He'll probably compete for backup defensive tackle spot. Seventh round pick, so nobody's gonna lose sleep if he doesn't end up being good. But yep, that's the Vikings draft. Anything you want to add at the end? Yeah. Remember when I wore this hat for the first time and we said, prime time, prime time. Where's Prime been lately? What's he up to? Uh, he's saying that, well, his kid, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of prime time anymore. Uh, his kid, well, basically, in order to sign with the team through NIL, you need to go through both of his kids, Shiloh <laughs> for defense and Shadour for offense. I think that's for the a pretty mi- Yeah. Oh, nice. So, yeah, that's certainly something. And uh, his kid, Shadur, also said that he didn't even know who a player was after he transferred away, and they asked him about it. So, <laughs> don't know if he's too good of a guy. But, well, yeah. What if the – is Shadur the quarterback or the defense yep. back? Shadur, the defense. Uh, what, if he, what if he's better than J.J. McCarthy? Uh, I'd still rather have McCarthy because he's a way better person based off what I know. <laughs> oh, come on. Prime's a good guy. We like Prime. He's fine. He's, he's fine. He's literally – he's the NFL he's, LeVar Ball. He's fine. <laughs> he's LeVar Ball for the NFL. Or, or, yeah. Slash football. But if they sign his kid to play quarterback, maybe Dan could come out of retirement and play quarterback. Be a two for one. That, that would not shock me. If Except for his leg that. almost got his, he almost lost his leg, so that's probably not good. Yeah, so um that's not definitely not good. So that's pretty much sums up the Vikings draft. However, that's not the only topic of discussion here as Is this our uh, segue into the Minnesota Wild? Uh segue into the Minnesota Twins just ended their twelve game winning streak today. Not good. Oh, yeah. See, I got the old school. This is the 1987 and 91 Twins logo here mm-hmm. when they won world championships. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm just kidding. Um, if you want to talk about Twins, that'd be more with Maddox. I watched three games this year, and none of them were doing the 12-game winning streak. So I would say this about the Twins. It's good they had their 12-game winning streak to get back into the thick of things so that they're relevant this summer, but um, long way to go. A lot of deficiencies. Most of their players have passed away already and are on the DL. Buxton, Royce Lewis. Walner got sent down to St. Paul. Uh, Louis Varland is whining about not starting. It was terrible as a starter. Got sent down. So we'll talk about them later. Yeah. Um, the only thing I know is Johan, Johan, however he says it, Duran. Johan Duran, yeah, yeah, he's got a pretty cool close close uh, walk up song or whatever they want to call it. Yeah, and uh, Carlos Correa dominates. That's basically my summary of the season. But are you shocked that boxing got hurt? No, not even the slight bit. <laughs> Wasn't it? Didn't he like trip while trying to steal too? Who knows? Something they're showing the Wolves highlights right now on Fox Nine News. Yeah, so before we segue to the Wolves, uh, I remember a few years ago, uh, McGill Sano got injured, and he did it by falling down the clubhouse stairs. That's true, yeah. Yeah, that's got to be one of the worst injuries I've ever seen. Speaking stairs of, are dangerous. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of injuries, Chris Finch, only injured Timberwolves player on the roster, and this is the segue into injury, or the Timberwolves. Uh, Mike Inori takes over for the head coach. Well, we got to back up a little bit, though, because last time we recorded doing our pre-draft uh, episode, we were talking about how the Timberwolves were not going to look too good against the Suns, and we were hoping that they would maybe make it to the next time we recorded. Well, they haven't lost a playoff game since we said that. Knock on wood, they will close out the series. But looking good so far. Definitely a good start. Uh, took took away home court advantage for the Nuggets. So the series is in their hands now. 
and they just completely dominated the Suns. And I've said it jokingly for a while, and a lot of people have, but I think it's for real now. The Ant MJ comparisons. I don't know. It's pretty. Cool. Not it's pretty reminiscent. Not until he wins a championship. No, but we're also five and zero in the playoffs so far. So it's not like the championships. It. I would say that the Timberwolves, if they win this series, I would say they're pretty heavy finals favorites. Because uh, I don't. I don't think. This is, again, knock on wood, but I don't think whoever is on the other side of the conference between Dallas or Thunder, I don't think they're beating either the Wolves or Nuggets in I, the series. I think – And, yeah. I, I, I got a, I got a uh, bold prediction. Whoever wins the nuggets Timberwolves series will get beat by the Mavericks. Uh, da, uh, Luka and Kyrie might be unstoppable. Not good. Yeah. Uh, they have they're the definitely players. good. I think, well, we're getting way ahead of ourselves right now because first we have to get past the Nuggets who are Yeah, the Nuggets not... could easily win series. But oh, I, I, think, sure. I think that Denver will lose either this series or next series. And I think if mm-hmm. the Wolves win, everybody's going to assume they're going to win the next one. And both Dallas and Oklahoma City are good. Really good. I think, well, so the thing with those two, again, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but we'll talk about it anyways. I think that uh, series versus uh, Mavericks – I think that is a series where if Cat is on his game, which he has been so far this playoffs, if he is in that series, that's a win because the the Mavericks have their three best players are all guards and point guards at that, which Ant, Mike, Jaden, they can be good defenders on them. But the Mavericks don't really have anybody of note to guard Cat. So that's a series where yeah. if Cat can score 25 points a game, I think you win it. But you don't want to play ahead of ourselves. Good. You don't want to play Luke no. and Kyrie. That's a two-headed monster. They don't. They yeah, don't, but then the again, opposite. if you're the Mavericks, if you're the Mavericks, you don't want to play Ant, Rudy, Cat. As Cat said yesterday, it's not a big three; it's a big fifteen. Whereas the Mavericks is a big two. Yeah, so. but they have Tim Hardaway Jr. They have is Porzinga playing? If he's playing, he's uh, good. Porzingis is on the Celtics for like six years now. Oh yeah, who they trade? <laughs> But um, I wouldn't want to play Luke. That was Kyrie. a while ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> I wouldn't want to play Luke and Kyrie. That's not good. Yeah. And listen to this well, stat. This this is why the Wolves better make it far this year. Because after this year, they're done. Oklahoma City is good, oh. obviously. They're the number one seed. They have 12 picks over the next three years. Seven first-round picks <laughs> and five second-round. They're, they're well, going to make some serious noise. Oh yeah, but um, this is the Timberwolves' chance. This is it right here for sure. Well, not necessarily. Next year, it's a two-year window for the Timberwolves because after that, that's when Rudy, Mike, they kind of they Mike will probably be retired after next year. Rudy is gonna be pretty up there in age. Nikhil's contract's up, and that's when Cat, Jaden, and is expensive. It's the next two months window because it never pans out that way. Remember the Vikings in 2009, Favre came back. They were horrible in 2010. The, the only thing that Wolves have different that's going for them is they have Ant, who's young, is a superstar, so they'll always be good. But they have a team camaraderie. Everybody's bought in. They have great role players, and you're not going to yeah. be able to keep these guys around. So they, they, they need to either win it this year or they're not going to ever win it ever. Yeah, so before we keep getting ahead of ourselves talking about the Thunder and Mavericks, we still got to beat the best team in the NBA last year and definitely still competing this year. Uh, yesterday is a big win, good win, but I don't feel like that's sustainable because Ant, even though he has done it so far, is he really dropping 43 points every night? No, they need their role players to step up, but no, the, yeah. the, the, the Nuggets are toast. They're done. They're either going to lose to the Wolves or Mavs next round or Thunder. They're done. They're not going to repeat. They're, they don't have enough depth. So you got to hope the Wolves get past them and then grind it out against the Thunder or the Mavs. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. <laughs> y- Jokic had to do everything yesterday. Jamal Murray's hurt. His calf is bothering him. He's not the same player. He's still good. Yeah. It's not going to um, be easy, though. Terrible game yesterday, by the way, from Jaden, Nikhil, and Rudy. 
Nas also was definitely on pace to be in that category, but he's big time. Oh, you're just looking the... at the box score. I disagree. Rudy played great. He only had six points, but who no. cares if he scores? Same with McDaniels. I don't have the box score. As long as they anywhere. can play defense. Yeah, McDaniels had a good game, but he was not. Nikhil had a terrible game. You, that that's go goes with that being said. But yeah, Jaden's defense definitely a huge factor. Rudy, same thing. Although I think you know who I think the X factor yesterday was. I have two of them that are not. Ant is by far the MVP, everything like that. But I have two X factors yesterday, and they are Nas Reed and Carl Anthony Towns. Because, well, yeah, uh, Towns in the third quarter and Reed in the fourth quarter because they had no other scoring. And Towns played pretty, pretty impressive defense on Jokic for being known as a liability defensively, being able to hold him to what thirty-two points. But those were not thirty-two easy points. Like Rudy, or I meant Nikola, he's going to score no matter what. So you can't. He he's a guy where you really can't look at the box score to judge if it was good defensive performance. Uh, he had seven turnovers, and not a single basket of his was easy when he was being guarded by Cat. So, huge game defensively for Cat. Nas obviously got really hot in the fourth, 14 points. Um, he's grabbing two all game. And uh, the team shot 71% in the second half, which is also pretty unsustainable, but huge. Nuggets are throwing the kitchen sink at him tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It'll be a. It's gonna. It's gonna be a rough series, no matter what. Uh, but I don't expect a win tomorrow. However, if you're going into Minnesota with the one-one series, you can definitely be happy with that. And especially with the fact that it's potentially gonna be two zero. Like it's not like they already lost tomorrow. They could go into Minnesota two zero, but even one-one is really good. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough series, but. Don't For sure. let the media influence you. Whoever wins this series is not for sure going to go to the NBA Finals. The Thunder and Mavs are both solid, solid teams. Uh, Mavericks, I don't know about solid teams, but just Luka and Kyrie just so far. They're just – I feel like you're trapped. You, you listen to the media and you think whoever wins this series is going to make the Finals. It's false. False. Well, I I'm, I don't think – I do think that that is true, but it's, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Uh, Luca and Kyrie will win games individually, just them two. But I don't feel like – well, same story with the Nuggets. They don't have very much depth. And then the Thunder, they do have a lot of depth. But the, Dallas, I feel like though, the Thunder – Dallas is the team. The Kyrie and Luca are bought in as superstars, which is like the Wolves being bought in as a team. So that's dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like the problem with Kyrie is he's always been selfish. He and Luca are bought in right now. They they don't care who gets the limelight. Uh, they they're just bought in. They're they're tough. I'm telling you, that's that's they're, that's not good. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, no, it will definitely you be argue, tough. You could argue Luca and or Irving are as good, if not better, than Edwards. Either one of them. Luca is better. Irving. Kyrie might be the best guard of all time the problem is he's just been a bird brain but he's bought in right now so you gotta be careful uh Kyrie I don't well the thing with both Ant and Kyrie is whoever's more like on their game is a better player because but the problem is that the Timberwolves don't have another guy like they have two guys Luca and Kyrie that's dangerous 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 yeah, if I think if you can grind out a series with the Mavericks, I think the longer the series goes versus Dallas, the better. But we're getting ahead of ourselves again. But for no but matter Ma- what team, Mavs, longer, beat, Mavs beat the Thunder in six, maybe five. Yeah, but Thunder a good team too. They got Chet Shea, definitely a good team. Chet's a skirt. Well, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Speaking of skirts, uh, anything you want to say about Cat so far this playoffs? No, he's been good. He's been fine. Uh, he's not being a skirt right now, which is good. Yeah. Uh, so I, we haven't talked too much about the Sun series because there's not much to talk about. Everyone saw it. It was just domination. It was Kevin Durant couldn't do anything. Well, he could, but not enough. Devin Booker scored 49 points, but that was the worst 49 performance I think I might have ever seen. 
kind of reminiscent of the Carl Anthony Towns 63 point game versus the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, and the yeah. Bradley Bill is terrible. He's old. Durant's old. Booker's still good. He just cries a lot, but who doesn't? <laughs> they just have no. Oh, depth. Yeah. They have no. They have nobody on that team other than those three guys. Well, that's funny that you say that because you were just talking about how the Mavericks two guys. Is... No, the Mavericks have guys. They have Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, I'd have to look him up because I'm not. Well, Bradley Beal is better than Tim Hardaway Jr. No, Tim Hardaway Jr. is way better than Bradley Beal at this point mm. in his career. This isn't mm. Dallas Mavericks fan line, but I can look up their roster. Hold on. They I'm got... telling you, the team to beat. I'm telling you, you don't get sucked into the media. I think the Wolves can beat the Nuggets. I think they have a ways to go, but I think I would definitely it's say not whoever, it's, not whoever wins this series. it's not whoever wins this series. Look at their roster real quick. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I know them. The internet's a little slow. slow here. Everybody's on MySpace. So. They have yeah. uh, oh Dante Exum. He's good. They he's have okay, Josh yeah. Green. Josh Green. He's good. Tim Hardaway Jr. Obviously, we talked about him. Uh, oh, this is the guy that I was thinking of, but I think he's hurt right now. Maxi Kleiber. Oh, the yeah, big white guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Good role player. Um, then Not they have anything PJ to Washington. Read. PJ Washington's good. I'm telling you, you don't want to mess with that team. They have eight good players. They have Luca, Dante Exum, that's two. Josh Green, three. Hardaway, four. Irvine, five. Oh, Derek Jones Jr., six. Kleiber, seven. Um, PJ Washington, eight. And then I didn't even say these two guys, but they're pretty good, but they're old. Markeith Morris, Dwight Powell, and Derek Lively. You don't want to mess um, with that team. Well, Dante Exum. And they have a good coach, too. They have a good coach, too. So do Timberwolves. You know, Timberwolves have the best depth in the NBA, considering that they have a good backup coach, too. But uh, they, you know they how you're – Yeah, they do. You're uh, hyping up Dante Exum? Well, I wasn't uh, hyping him up. I said he's a good role player. Well, I don't know about that, considering that Luca Garza has more points per game this year than him. And well, he's Luka a Garza defensive guy, anyway. I think he's a defensive guy. But anyway, T- Tim Hardaway is good. P.J. Washington, look up his stats. He's good. Um, and then Kleiber, but I think he got hurt. Don't sleep on the Mavs. I don't know. I feel like I feel like the Nuggets is the team to beat. We'll definitely find out. And well, the Nuggets don't is even definitely have the team to beat because they won the NBA Finals last year. But all I'm telling you is this is a yeah. warning. Don't get sucked into the media who's saying this is the – this is the the winner of this series is going to the NBA Finals. No, doesn't matter. They could, but the, those other two teams are just as good as these two teams. There's the West is stacked. I told you that before. Here, I'll I'll put it this way: the the Mavericks and Thunder definitely could win a series versus both these teams. Easily. But the top two teams in the conference are the Nuggets and Timberwolves. Nope, Thunder. They're the one seed. Yeah, but. They, well, they're solid. They're solid, but I think the best team is the Nuggets, then the Tim Wolves, then I'd go Thunder, and then I'd go Mavericks. And any of those teams could be any of those teams in a playoff series. Exactly. So don't get sucked into whoever wins this series. Let's look at the standings here real quick. These teams are separated by like two games during the regular season. The, but like you no, said, the Mavericks don't, don't get a little bit farther. Yeah, but they didn't. The they weren't helpful also, about halfway through. Let's talk about the Clippers for a little bit. They James Harden might be the worst best player of all time. No, Paul George is. He's uh, he's so overrated. That every single player on that team, not named Kawhi Leonard, is overrated. And Kawhi Leonard plays like two games a year, so he's irrelevant. Too. Exactly. He, yeah, he he's pretty much wears street clothes more than plays, but. Uh, All right. Well, we got to hope the Wolves beat the Nuggets and then be a good problem. Yeah, one series, one. Thunder, the Mavs. Got to take it one game at a time. If 
Ant keeps playing like they do now, there's not really a limit on how far they can go, but n- not a single game or series will be easy for the rest of the playoffs. And then that's that's until we're talking about the Western Conference playoffs, even the oh, finals, yeah. which will likely be versus Celtics. No, I don't. Th- that'll be a good series, but I think the Celtics win the finals. They're just too good. Uh, I think they will because whoever wins the West, they're gonna be they're all gonna beat up on each other. The East is terrible, so the Celtics will have yeah. an easy path to the finals. They should win whoever they play against. Well, the thing is, the Knicks is who they'll probably play against, and the Knicks, uh, I the Celtics will win that series. But the Wolves didn't need Tibbs. Different. Wolves didn't need Tibbs. Yeah. Uh, did you see that Tibbs and Jimmy Butler were beefing with each other on social media? No, I love both of them. So remember when the Timberwolves got rid of Tibbs because he was too mean? It's kind of like when the Vikings got rid of uh, Zimmer for being too mean. They got infant. At least the Timberwolves got lucky and got Finch. She was good. Finch would eat infant for breakfast, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um... He would. He'd crush him. Probably. Infant, well, Finch is... Would... Infant would be like, uh, Finchy, the guys are trying really hard. We want to have a really good culture. And Finchy would say, shut up. I tore my knee. Get out of here. We're trying to win games. <laughs> Do you see uh, Justin Jefferson was commenting on Anthony Edwards' performance yesterday on his Instagram? No. Did he say, I wish I could be half as good as him? <laughs> you haven't watched a lot of Justin Jefferson, I take it. <laughs> Edwards is way better, not even in the same conversation. Well, they're not even the same conversation. It, you well, correct because one of them plays basketball, one of them plays football, mm-hmm. and it's impossible to compare them. But and Jefferson's a receiver, and Edwards can completely take over a game as the position. Yeah, as he put. well, Jefferson, Jefferson can too if he no. if it's not Nick Mullins throwing the ball to random people. But I love Edwards. I think I told you I ripped Cat for years. I've given him credit for what he's been doing. Jefferson's an idiot. Get rid of him. Let's continue to talk about the Wolves. Let's not waste our time on Jefferson. Well, yeah, I think – is there anything else you want to say about the Wolves or Twins or Vikings? Uh, no, we don't – the Vikings and Twins don't deserve to be talked about right now. The Wolves are doing really good in the playoffs. Shouldn't, nobody should even talk about the Vikings or Twins. Nobody cares. We'll talk about them later. Wolves got to well, take it one game at a time and, and try to win a series and move on to the uh, finals, Western Conference finals. Yeah. Well, first they got to advance to Target Center. Well, it tomorrow will be advance. tough. They're, the odds that the Timberwolves win tomorrow are very, very low. I That's agree. Okay. And I think if the Timberwolves win tomorrow, the series is pretty close to being over. Nah, not against the Nuggets. Not against the Nuggets. They're the defending champs. You got to cut the head off the snake before it's over. Well, yeah, I thought that about the Suns too, which we're getting way too ahead of ourselves here. But, you know, it's the first time anything's happened that's good for the Timberwolves in 20 years. So might as well enjoy it. But well, that, I hope they keep winning because this is their chance because they have really good role players. They're bought in as a team. Uh, they have a superstar. This is their chance. I, I'm not. I'm not taking the bait of the media that says, oh, Whoever wins this series is winning next. We talked about that. We don't need to beat a dead horse. And then the other thing you can't get sucked into is, oh, they're going to be good for so many years. You don't know that. You got to win right now. They got to win right now. Right now. Nobody cares about next year. We got to win right yeah. now. Um. Well, I guess we could talk about the Lakers. But we could maybe say a little bit about each series so far on the Skull Show. Um. Also, programming note, we could probably do a schedule reaction slash, like, prediction video in the next three weeks, say. Is that fair? Because the schedule will come out on Thursday. We could either do it next weekend, the weekend after, the weekend after that. When's the schedule come out? Thursday. Oh, nice. So, uh, yeah, it's hard yeah. with baseball season, so we'll have to see. We'll just have to communicate. Yeah. Within the next few weekends, there will be a post probably pretty late on either Saturday or Sunday afternoon within the next month, I'd say. But before June, there will be a video on the schedule predictions, and, uh, yep. Uh, so we can go through each first-round series quick. Uh, Thunder Pelicans, not really any opinions on that. Thunder just kind of owned them. Uh, Clippers, Mavericks, here, well, why don't we each sum up each series in a sentence? Uh, Thunder Pelicans. 
Uh, say that again. So we'll sum up each NBA first round series in a sentence or a word. Uh, start off Thunder Pelicans. I would say domination. Uh, I didn't watch any of it. Yes, domination. Yeah. Uh, Clippers Mavericks. I would say future is grim for the Clippers. Um, watch one game. Luca and Kyrie dominate. Timberwolves Suns. Ant, MJ? Uh, not till he wins a championship. He'll probably win like seven as a Laker. <laughs> Nuggets, Lakers. LeBron can't do it all. LeBron's an idiot. <laughs> he had 30, he had a 30 point triple double in the elimination game. It's not much more he can do. Didn't talk about his points. I just said he's an idiot. <laughs> he got his uh, coach. Celtics, fired. Celtics, he. Uh, he, Jimmy Butler is done. Heat, heat were injured. Celtics way better. East is terrible. Cavaliers magic. Nobody uh, cares. Competitive, but gonna lose. Pacers Bucks injuries. Bucks had like all the reserves playing. Yep. Uh, and Knicks Sixers entertaining. I uh, didn't watch any of it. Glad the Knicks won. Timberwolves didn't need Tibbs. He was too mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So that's every series summed up in a word. We, we've we said our thoughts on the Western Conference playoffs. Celtics, Cavs, Celtics will win that. And Pacers, Knicks, that should be a good series. I think the Knicks will win. Uh, Celtics, Knicks, Conference Finals. It'll be a good I'll, series. I'm gonna, Celtics I'll will take Pacers. Out, but. I'll take Pacers. Not that it matters because whoever wins will lose. I'll say Celtics Pacers yep. and Celtics win. Then I'm going to say Mavs, and I'm going to say Wolves. I'm going to actually pick the Wolves, and then I'm going to say Mavs Celtics NBA Finals. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Celtics first Knicks. I'm going to say Celtics win in six, and then I'll go Thunder in seven, Nuggets in six over the Timberwolves, and then I'll take the Nuggets to beat the Thunder, and I'll take the. Celtics over the Nuggets in six in the NBA final. Celtics over Thunder. Celtics over Nuggets. Oh, yeah. I, I have whoever uh, wins the Thunder Mavs series will make it to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. So those are our official predictions. But I think the Mavs. I think the Mavs win. Yeah. Yeah. So those are our official predictions. You say, I say Celtics over Nuggets, NBA Finals. You say Celtics over. Mavs? I didn't pick in that one. I don't know. Well, you have to ask me later. That one's a toss up. Yeah. So next hard for me, probably hard for me to pick a team with Jalen Brown on it. Jalen Brown's one of the biggest skirts in the entire history. But I like Jason Tatum, but Jalen Brown's an idiot. Yeah. So um well hopefully Tim Wolves, like we said last time, are still in the playoffs next time we record. Um, if so, that means they are probably pretty decently into a conference final series, which I don't know, that'd be pretty good. But if not, we'll just predict the Viking schedule. Pretty long episode here today on the school show. So definitely more of a podcast than a show, even though it, it used to be called a podcast, but the episodes just weren't long enough. But anyways, that's kind of a tangent, but, uh, thank you for coming on. Hope to see you back within the next month. Pick, predict the Viking schedule. Maybe we'll need to do an emergency Timberwolves live stream. Say they win this series or the next one. And uh, yeah, see you. Sounds good. Prime time. Prime time. Prime time.